Hey guys, this is James Vogel. I'm recording from the Aria Hotel Las Vegas. I'm actually here for the Poker World Series uh, starting in a few days. But someone's challenged me to quite a big game of backgammon in a, about a month's time. And I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't played much backgammon in the last 10, 15 years even. Um, and we're playing for very high stakes, so I want to practice a bit. Uh, so I'm planning to play 100 games, uh, maybe 10 sessions of 10 games each. And we're going to record them. I'm training with a um, XG, which is the, the top backgammon program, which plays perfectly. Um, and as the plays come up, maybe we're going to check and try and like improve a little bit and we'll look over some moves and figure out why the computer's doing certain things. So if you think you're good at backgammon and everyone says, oh, I'm so great at backgammon, uh, let's see what you can do. Some of it's quite advanced. Um, if you got, I'm going to speak as if you're an advanced player and know what you're doing. This isn't for beginners uh, because if you're a beginner, you can play against XG. It will show you which moves to play, but it won't tell you why. Here, I'm going to try and tell you why. Um, but if you've got any questions, just shoot them in the comment box uh, at the bottom of the YouTube uh, video, and I'll try and answer them uh, as soon as I can. Right, let's uh, dive into the first session. Okay, guys, here we go. This is the first session of 10 games. Um, it's just past midnight in Vegas. We've got the World Series main event tomorrow. And I'm a little bit jet lagged, so I thought we sort of, uh, there are a few other things I could be doing in Vegas, but instead I've logged on to play 10 games of backgammon and record it and discuss anything that comes up. So we're playing against uh, XG Gammon, which is uh, the best computer out there uh, backgammon program. And it basically plays pretty much perfectly every go. Uh, so we're not playing to win, we're just playing to train and uh, see if we can improve a little bit. My backgammon's pretty rusty these days. Um, Okay, so here's the first decision of the game. We can play the two down and make this 11 point and slot the most important point on the board, the five point, uh, but he hits us with any one. Or we can just play safe and stack them up. And I think I prefer this here because we're slightly ahead in the race. If you see where I'm pointing with my mouse, it's 140 to 144. I just don't think it's worth uh, leaving the shot, even though it would have been nice to make the to start off the five point. So we're just playing passively, coming around, um, and that's a pretty good roll. We just make the five point, and we're still only four pips ahead, so we're not really close to a cube. Um, Not the most exciting first game uh, you'll ever see. Okay, so now we could come in like this and we leave shots if black rolls a 3 6 or a 5 4 or a double 3. But we start clearing the point. Or we can just play something like this, which is. A little bit more passive, but doesn't leave all the shots. I think this is slightly better. Okay, so that was my first mistake of the game. Now, if you see on the bottom left, as we're training here, whenever this number goes up, it means we made uh, a different move to what the computer would have made, which is a slight error. So I can check back um, at that move, which was the 6-4. Ah, and it was slightly better to... It was right not to, to leave the shots, but I should have slotted the one point instead of... So from here, with a four to play, uh, five to one w was better than uh, six to two. So not that big a deal, uh, but just slight, slight sort of technical error. Uh, I still don't think we're in a cube. Now this is a pretty good roll, and it should be well on the way to game over. We're up. Well, we're still only up four pips, so I don't think we got a cube. But it's going off. Well. Snowy just, uh, sorry, XG just told us we did have a cube there, so we missed it slightly. And now the race is close, but we've got so many good numbers that do good things. This is a, a pretty clear cube. We've got four builders on top of him to make the point. And worst, you know, we can roll some big doubles as well. So I think it's a, it's a double and a pretty easy take. Uh, so we can pick and pass here. He only hits us with uh, three, five, and double four. And now it's just a pure race. Bring the men in, try and take them off. So 
there's not much exciting here, so I'm just going to click finish game. Um, so that was pretty much the first game, it's just a pure race. There wasn't one hit the whole game. That happens occasionally. And if you see on the bottom left, it gives us our rating. So over, the computer is always going to play at 0, 0.0 because it's copying its move. And here, the number is 1.29. So the closer we are to 0, the closer to perfect uh, we've played. Ah! So, uh, I thought it was all over, but Black must have rolled pretty big. Yeah, he just rolled double six. And now this is a classic position. So he's doubled us back. He put two men on his two point. We've got one on our one. So this is just a classic uh, double take. Because if he rolls any one except double one, uh, he misses. So he could roll six one, five one, four one, three one, two one, and we win the game. And that's 10 shots out of 36. Uh, le uh, we win the game and we only need 25% it's the last roll position which is one in nine games and here um, uh, we win uh, more often than one in nine uh, we win 10 in 36 instead of nine in 36 so it's a, just a straightforward mathematical take and uh, we lose well we're not playing for money big deal but interesting position that came up okay so six five first roll He's rolled 6-2 and play like that, and now we can either run or, or double hit. Um, and I think we're going to go for this. Now this is interesting. We've got a 6-1. So the options are cover the one point and split at the back. Which is pretty neat, but he comes in and a little bit ugly. The other option is to leave the blonde on the one point, come down and make the bar point and split. Just get hit back with all ones, but make the pure play. Tough one. So either way, we're playing the one over here. Now we've got to decide with a six. Okay, we're going to try this. And it looks like it was pretty much right. Let's have a look if it was close. I think it was pretty close. No, it's right by... 0.06, so the other play would have been an error. So we've done something right with a key decision so far this session. Now we roll double four. So the hit on the outside is clear. That's two of them. Now we have two more to play. So we can either make the four point here, or just come come round and make the nine point. Quite tough. I think we're going to make the four point because if he doesn't come in, if he rolls combos of one, four, and six, I think we've got a pretty nice cube after this play. He did come in. So we've got to work a bit harder. In with a five, so we've got a six to play. So play 20 to 14 coming out. Play just behind him, I think. I don't want to leave too many blots. Okay, so we hit with a five and now we've got a one. So we could pick this man up, burning it to the one point, which is one thing in backgammon you basically never want to do is burn checkers past all the opponents. It's like dead, it leaves you inflexible the rest of the game. So that's one choice, and the other choice is just to play the one up here. I think I'm going to do this. I just can't burn a checker that early in the game. And this gives us a attacking six if he doesn't come in uh, much prettier. And now we've got a very strong cube. And I don't even think he's got a pass, a take. He's got, so he's got very little. Oh, he took. So uh, now we can turn into a blitz, try and attack and win a gammon. So this is more interesting than the first game, which was a pure race. Right now he's anchored on the deuce, so he's got a deuce five game, and he's going to be in it for a long time now. So we're going to have some tricky technical plays to bring this home. Uh, starting now, the four looks obvious, and now we can either come out with the three, or just carry on. I quite like this. So row double five. Now how are we going to bring this this game home? 
one I think this is a nice point because it clears the mid and it, it makes the eight point, which is six away from its two point. So I think there's two of them. Uh, and now we've got two more to play. So they I think they play themselves like this. Now he's going to make a board and wait for a shot. So we've got a six one. We could burn the man like this, and we, again, it leaves you inflexible. He's going to make a stronger ball. We've got to, still got to clear this. Eventually, we're going to need more shots. So I think it's going to be right to come out with a six. And if we keep going with a one, we duplicate fours. So you can hit from there to there, or there to there. Either way, a four. That looks pretty clear. Okay. Come in with the two and safety the other block. Come to the edge of the prime. These play themselves. Now we've got an underdog for the first time and get cubed already. <sighs> I'm not loving it at all, but I think we've got to take this because if we come in, he's still got so many men, so much, so many things that can happen, and we don't lose many gammons. I'm going to try and take this. Um, one six two five already we got. So we just come in. And whilst we didn't hit, that's a pretty neat shot. Keep coming in and putting him under pressure. Oh, I just made a mistake. I played too quickly there. So if you see on the bottom left, my rating just went from 0.8 to 1.07. So I know I've made a mistake. Uh, and I should have left the spare on the 6. Instead, I stripped it and stacked these up a bit. That was just a little bit too quick on a technical play. So the 5 and 2. Oh, he's missed. Now... We're up 10 pips in the race. We own the cube on four. I think this is a double. Any big double, we're home. Any tens hit, like six, four. Sorry, nines. So six, three, five, four. And small numbers. We, we don't have that many bad numbers. There's a lot of good things that can happen. Let's ship the cube. And I think he'll have a straightforward take. Now we come in and uh, we're well ahead. Um, and it looks like we're going to win an 8 cube. So overall, we made one mistake there on a technical play, but we're playing at 0 0.91 over two games, which is absolutely phenomenal. That's not going to last, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd be the best player in the world by a long, long way. But they've been, I guess, relatively straightforward plays. And now this is something, second roll of the game, quite interesting. So we've got a 1. And a lot of beginners would hit here on the one point with a five, but you get hit back and it's just not the right play. You just, sometimes you have to learn the opening rolls and this is the right play. I just made a little mistake there with a the four two. I think I would have been better to make the four point like that, leaving the shot on the on the um, the bar, which is interesting. He hits with a two. Maybe some of his twos are good anyway. Double two, four two makes the four point. Two one makes his ten point. Um, and now I make a strong by by making the four point. I made a strong point on my board. And if he misses, I can make the bar next time. It's just a little bit smoother uh, than this play. Um, so that was an interesting one. Joker to hit him on the outside. I'm in the middle of the desert here in Vegas. I'm very thirsty. I've got to take a little bit of a drink. I'm doing so much talking. So whilst I'm doing that, we safety uh, the plot up here. And now we've got a one to play. Let me just do this. So that 2-1 was a mistake. Again, making the inner ball point. Wow, look at that. This was a stronger play with a 2-1. Making my own 5-point. 
and I guess it duplicates the shot. So he's hitting us with, well, it's giving him a lot. Fours, threes, threes and fours and two ones. Um, but it's just so strong for the whole game, I guess, having that five point compared to this position. A little bit surprised here. I know the five point's strong, but this was no shots. And Anyway, on we, on we go. So now we point on him and we'd like to make this four point um, is the stronger point, but I think that a two point is better because it's still three points in the board and it leaves us to eight points. So we have more points overall and three builders uh, for the inside. No, that was wrong. Uh, the four point was probably a little bit stronger. Okay, we anchor up. Gives us equity in the game for a long time now, even though we're dogs. Another joker to hit him. Now he fans, right. So now we stop and uh, have a think about the cube decision. With 10 ahead, he's got a man on the bar. A lot of good things that can happen here. By doubling, we activate the gammons. So let's have a look at some of the rolls, what happens. So double six is good. Um, double four, double three, double two, double one are pretty awful. Awesome shots. Six five, we come all the way around and escape. Fans. Four two three one makes these points. He might not come in. Oops, sorry. So, I think we'll give it one shake here. And if it wasn't a double before, I don't think it's a double now. Okay, so six one. So we could make the bar point, which is strong. Obviously, this looks nice, but I mean, it's very good attacking, but he hits us with threes and fours. And I think we can just do this. We're winning the game by quite a lot. We should have a cube next roll, unless he hits us back with a 6-1 or a 3-4. Um, not quite a cube, because he just escaped, but with the pip count's now 122 to 127. We're five ahead and uh, quite happy with this position. It's really a question of who rolls the biggest number and then just leads to a cube. Could be good enough. So now we're 13 ahead and we've got some big doubles to play and no bad numbers. I think this is a straightforward double. Easy take. Still can't clear. Well, just wrote another double six, but unfortunately that makes it a bit of a boring game. Um, not really much to say on this one. And we go to game four. Now, I mean, you know, a lot of sort of beginners would make the two point, but I think this is better because it just leaves a lot more flexibility. But there's not probably not much in it. We're in a holding game now, where we've got the opponent's five point, he's got our bar point, and uh, we try and just bring the checkers round, building a board, waiting for a double, maybe a shot like this. Okay, well there's a double, but we're blocked, Pretty much forced. Now. we do this, we've got to run off here with a six. Looks compact and brings our checkers in, but what do we play next time? Do we just do this for one go? I think so. 
Okay, now, if I play the 6 out, where's the 5? Gives some 2s to hit 3s and 5s, but it maintains our board. The other player is this. What do we play next time? He's got control of everywhere. And what's the plan? Uh, we can't hope to roll double four or double six every time. So it's tough. I mean, we could also play the six here and do something like break the board. But I don't like this. Hmm. Not sure about this at all, but we're going to... I'm really not sure at all, but we're going to try it. Um, I think it was a small error. Yeah, 0 0.027. The passive play of just coming in and waiting was slightly better, but not, there's not that much in it. This was a, a small error. Um, and here's our five. Now, it's actually quite interesting. If we just pop out, we need in direct twos, and he can also hit with a six one and a four three. So that's 15 out of 36 shots, eight shots. Playing with two blots as well. And the other way, we only play with one blot, but it's got direct threes and fives. I think this is better. It's one block. No! First blunder of the session. So this is the middle of game four, towards the end of game four, and I think it's pretty much the first blunder I made. So that's a 0 0.08 error, and it's a huge one as well. Wow. It's just so much better. Hmm. I guess when he misses, we, we lead to a strong cube. Um, so why is this so much better than this? Playing with one block. I guess here he hits us with threes and fives. Four one, double one. It's 23 shots, double, sorry. Um, yeah, he just hits us with too much and maybe he can even make that point. Whereas this play, I guess you just want to minimize shots, even if it is with two blots. So this was a pretty bad one, and it affected the whole error rate of the, the, the game. From going from playing a uh, 3.3 uh, uh, sub-2 level, now I'm playing at 3.3, which is still world-class, but that was a big blow. Now we get cubed. There were six pips in front, he doesn't always cover. This is just a pretty easy take. Okay, so we've gone favorite. Do we have enough to cube? Level race, 70 pips all. All ones hit and five six. So we've got 13 shots that hit. Double six, double five, double four is also in is 18. Are there any really bad numbers? I could roll 6 2. 6 3 leaves a shot. That's pretty much it. Hmm. The question is do we want to give away the cube? Do we lose our market by a lot when we hit with a 1? I have a natural tendency to double too early as well. So when I'm playing a cash game, again, not against a computer, against a human, lots of good things can happen when you double early. The opponent might pass occasionally. When he takes and has a recube, he may not recube optimally and put you under, under pressure again. But here, trying to play good technical backgammon, we've got to think of it differently. Hmm. My first instinct is to cube, but, but maybe we get cubed out in the race later. I think we let's give it a roll. Happy to lose our market. And it looks like it was right uh, not to cube. Um, I don't have to check because that error didn't fall. Uh, nevertheless, we lost our market. Um, oh, even uh, that, uh, that shows why it wasn't a cube. So here, this is interesting. So the, the race is 50 against 62. It's 12 pips difference. That's over 20% differential, and the computer still takes this. Wow. Quite surprised, actually. Usually 20% differential in pip count is... is, is 
they've rotate. You can see we've got some gaps on the five we may miss. Uh, and we've got all the wastage on the one point. That must be why. Well, Okay, not my best game ever, but threw up some slightly more interesting things. So all the first five rolls of this game have been relatively straightforward. Quite an interesting 5-1 he played there. That's not the kind of play a beginner or intermediate would make to step out and challenge and be hit with ones, fours and sixes. Um, you see, this was a spot where he had a 5-1 to play and it comes out instead of splitting and coming down. I guess the, the object he's winning the attacking game, he's fighting for the advanced anchor and he doesn't care if he's hit. It's worth going for and he gets some return shots when he's missed like this. Anyway, we hit with a six and now we have a one. So I think we made the bar point. And now we have a pretty strong game. But we stop back on his one as well. Do we have enough to cue? Let's go through our shots again. We roll a 6 2, a double 4, we hit him on the outside. Double 6 is obviously a killer, double 4 is a killer for us. And then so much of the time we roll something like 5 1, 3 1, even 2 1 makes the prime. I just like cubing here. Quite a lot of good things can happen. But I do have a tendency to double early. This one was a cube. Uh, so that's good, and we hit the man on the outside. It's one of the numbers we talked about. So lots of hitting back and forth, and we're now in a crushing position. And we're going to go for the gamut, stop him from anchoring on the two point. Now this is interesting. The two plays itself, and we've got a four to play. This is the absolute blitz here. Two on the bar, three on the ace point. If he doesn't hit us back with a three, we're in such strong shape. He hits us back with a three. Still got another man on the bar and we're coming in. This is my tendency, I think. If we if we if we do this play here and he rolls a three, he's just in it for the whole game. With a one three back game. Yeah, he doesn't have the greatest timing in the world. In fact, he doesn't have great timing at all. Maybe this is right. We can still attack him next time and we can still win gammons even when he comes in on the three. Interesting. So you see backgammon's about tempo. So many of the, the plays are quick and bang, bang, bang and just no-brainers, we call them. And this one, you really have to think. I think we go for this. It just wins so many gammons and just it's aggressive and I like it. But it was an error. We were, we were better just to play the passive play. Well, it wasn't that passive, but I guess he's probably going to get gammon enough even when he rolls a three. Anyway, this is where we're at now. Now we start escaping. It's always a balance between coming in and attacking and bringing the men home. And if I play the five here, play with one, this is this one is pretty ugly. Um, sort of like this, it gives us lots of spares to make the three, and yes, it gives him one six, three six, double three, but so what? He's got all these men stuck back. Uh, he's not winning this game, whatever happens. So 
I think we need to stay back and, 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 and well, maybe. Yeah, why not? Now his board's crushed, we're not really worried about anything now. He's got a busted 1-3 uh, back. 1-3 back games are very strong, but when his board's crushed, he just doesn't have the timing. Even if he hits me, he's not going to win now. Um, Well, he's managed to keep it together. I spoke too soon. Good shot. Because now he's got to go. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now it's shot time. I think this is all we got. Of four. I don't think we can play with two blocks. Just gotta come in. So this is interesting. How many men oh I was just thinking about how many men we had off and five men off and so on. Tom player. Play switching. No, no, shot. We have to do this. B2 again. We'll leave another shot. Here we do it. We have to do it this way because then if he misses with a one, he comes in behind us and we should be pretty safe like that. Um, okay, halfway through the session. Playing pretty decent backgammon, except for that one big blunder. 3.26 rating is better than my long-term average, even when I was playing a lot of backgammon, which was quite a while ago now. Let's see if we can keep it up or play even better. Okay, 6-3. So I think we like the anchor on the five point. Um, so we just come in. Now, do we have a little something something? It's absolutely level race, 134 pips each. We got his five point. So we got good defense. We've got numbers like double one, double two, double three, double four, double six, double five. Sorry if this is becoming familiar, but you have to scan through when it's a question of market losers. So all the doubles are great. And we've also got three one as a good shot, four two as a blitz. I just think we have to double here to activate the gamuts. Good thing can happen. Like that. Okay. Now he's stuck behind the five prime. And this is interesting. So when I started out back down, I definitely had a tendency to come off my anchors too early. So I just, this would just be automatic for me. Now, because I know it's a weakness, I have to think about it more. So here, yeah, we're up 12, he's behind the prime, but can he get back into this game with attacking us with ones and threes on his five point now? Whereas I can just play sort of like this, only leaving six two. Then how are we gonna get home later? Yeah, I think this is right. I mean, we can always roll a double or, or, or rush off there with a big number later. Uh, and it would be the same thing. It's not like his board, it's not like he's got enough builders to really substantially improve his board uh, by the time I go later. So now we can we can burn a checker behind him like this. Um, which I never particularly like doing and he makes the three point his board's getting stronger. 
If we go like this, I think this is best. We duplicate the threes, keep all our checkers in front of him. I think now's the time. No, nope, even then it was right to keep the anchor. So just shows you, um, this is interesting. We would like to step up, duplicates threes, eight to five and 13, 10, but leaves two blots. But it does sort of come up, which is where we want to be to escape. Still, I think we play with one blot here. Seems to be rolling quite well. This game has gone pretty well again. Now the only question is, can we win a gamut? Spread our checkers ready for him. Oh, this is interesting. If I just play like this, I can go for him on the one point next time. He escapes with fives or sixes. If I hit him, what happens if he hits us back? He's got to roll one what? Okay, if he rolls one six, that's amazing for him. Other than that, he has to crack the board. So I think we're going to go for this. I was slight, a bit ambitious, slightly, slightly too aggressive. If he was telling me. But when you're winning the game by so much, anything you do is going to be pretty good. It's not the end of the world. Now we're probably a favorite to win a gammon. It's going to be pretty close. I'm down to the last roll. So we're winning 16 points in seven games. I mean, to be honest, usually when I'm training uh, against the computer, I don't even look at the score. What difference does it make? We're not playing to win. We're just playing for like some interesting positions to come up and train and, and learn a little bit of something new and stay sharp. Uh, and often when I'm in a, a game where there's no play, I'll just resign the game. Uh, but to win 16 points in, in seven games isn't bad going. Uh, basically I've been rolling uh, pretty well. Okay, so we've got a 5-4 here, first decision of the game. We can just run like this. Uh, two's to hit, two's to make the anchor for him, duplication, uh, quite smooth. Or we can start attacking. I think this is best. Interesting. So we like to make his 21 point anchor here, but it leaves sixes and fives, and this just makes a good point and cleans up the block. Uh, we're not in such a rush to make an anchor. You can always do it like that. He's responded with his own anchor. And now we're back to a classic holding game. These kind of holding games are usually pretty technical uh, in the play. Um, oh, made my second blunder of the session there. But what was so bad about 5 3? Let's have a look. Wow. I'm supposed to volunteer a shot with a 5. I guess he's got two blots in his board, so unless he rolls 5-2, you're getting shots back, and he's got to leave his anchor. Why is this so much better than my play? I guess my play makes the points we don't really want in the inner board, one, two, and it leaves us stripped everywhere, and he's going to improve his board. Yeah, now what are we going to play next time with so many rolls? Uh, and his, his board's going to be significantly stronger, so this play... Uh, there's much more flexibility when you're missed and when you hit it's not that bad because you got all the shots back so that's a really good example of a play where i didn't really even think about it in fact i didn't it didn't even cross my mind and the computer picks up that little bit of equity finding plays like this that a lot of even the top humans in the world may not have found that one i'd be interested to ask some of them or if they're watching to comment 
um, whether that one was obvious or not, maybe it's just a blind spot that I had. Uh, now we have the same, you see this is a situation now, that kind of play to give us play in spares, it's just too dangerous because if he hits us with a two with a, a board like his, it's just crushing, whereas before it wasn't. Whoa, another blunder back to back. So that was the right play, even with a crushing board. And this, this play I made here, it's a 0.28 error. That's like, it's like over a triple blunder. Uh, it's one of the worst plays you're ever going to see me make. If I play 100 games, I may not make a play as bad as this. Hmm. Again, he gets stronger. and There's so many numbers now where I leave a double blot. And how do I come home? Even if I roll a big double, I probably could roll two big doubles. Just too ugly. Should have just brought the checkers down. Anyway, it's clearly misevaluating this position. And now something like this happens uh, because I'm so stripped and the way I played it so poorly. You see my ratings gone. I was playing super world class, like under a three or around a three a whole session. And I make two blunders back to back and already I'm just about only world class, almost border on expert now because I've left myself no board. I'm stripped. If I play this two, I mean, ugh, leaving him two sixes, blots everywhere. It's horrible. But what do I do? Anything I do, I've got to leave shots. This is just like, yuck. I'm going to face a cube, whatever I play. And I find a play that will give me a take. So if we hit, that's the only six. So he hits us with twos, fours, and a five, six. 22 shots. I've got four blots and he can win gammons. But he doesn't come in with ones, threes, and sixes. I'm going to have to take it somehow, I think. We find anything else? I mean, this is twos, ones, three, five, six. I can do anything if I missed. <sighs> yeah, I got a hit. Really don't know whether we can take this. Twos, fours, double five, five, six, it's 23 shots. When we get hit on the two point or the four point, we can lose a lot of gammons. Two thirds of the time we're getting hit. But when we don't get hit, we're 25 pips up in the race and he's got a man on the bar against the three point board. If he rolls double six, double three, double one, one three, one six, three six, he doesn't come in. Even then we've got our work cut out. I'm going to pass this. Yeah, my blunder's right. Okay, so uh, I think that was, I was right to pass that. Let's just check. Yeah, it was double pass and, and to take would have been a 0.357. So it would have been another huge, huge catastrophe, like another triple blunder. Uh, so yeah, that wasn't anything to be proud of that game. Um, and my ratings got punished as a result, quite rightly so, to make two blunders. One of them was just epically bad. I'm gonna blame it on my jet lag, the fact that it's coming up to 1 a.m. in Vegas. I'm a long way from home. Okay, this game sort of played itself so far. We got cubed. Um, And um, all we've really got is the ace point game. Try and build our board. Okay, so we're ready. Are we going to get a shot? That's the question. Okay, forced to go. 
Now we're stuck 20 pips, so not a very interesting game. I'm just gonna lose. There was uh, really no play to that game and no errors from me. Some games in backgammon are just no brainers, pretty much. See, that's quite interesting. The 5 2, I made a small error the first game. I would have been better to split at the back uh, with the 2 instead of coming down 13 11 like this. And that's something like a chess position where this is the second roll of the game and I'm making a, an error. Like, that's not, that's really pretty poor, you know? Chess players learn games 20 moves deep by book. And here, this is the second roll of the game and I don't even know what the right play is. Um, and it's just because I'm rusty. I haven't played any competitive backgammon for 10 to 15 years. Maybe in another session, at the beginning of the session, we'll just go through all the opening roles, roles and responses so uh, we learn them and something comes up. Uh, might be interesting. Uh, but for now, just you know, it was clearly better to split there. Uh, I made a note. Now we're in a fair bit of trouble. We have to split with this one. We're primed. We need to put pressure on that blur on the eight. Uh, in case he doesn't cover. I think we're going to make this big play like that. And I think we've got enough to take. I mean, don't love it, but we're ahead in the race. He may not hit us. Uh, wow, that was a small pass. 0 0.06, so the error, not a blunder to take it. I guess his board's just so strong and he hits us with threes, twos, two, one, double one, sorry. We just don't have enough. We don't have a point in board. Anyway, we took. Now let's make the most of it. Let's see what happens. So we've got a three, one here. Our choices are to make the four point, to make the three point, which is very big. I think that's too big. Uh, or to point on him. I think we point on him because it gives us time to do things next go. Um, get the three hits, and I don't think we want to be hitting on the ace point. We want to just come down and target the five and four points. Like that. Okay, so we step up to the edge of his prime as well. So we're in a priming game, but we're behind a six prime. Yeah, it's a crush. So this could be an interesting game now. We own the cube. I don't think we come out quite yet. Because he could crack if he doesn't roll a five or a six. A little bit like this. Now oh, we double jumped. So now we've got a good game holding the cube, but we're still stuck 12 in the race, so we haven't got anything. I'm rolling a lot of big doubles this session. And now we're three pips up, but he's all the way around. I think this is a double. And a pass. So on to the final game. 6-2. So we hit with a two and the six is theirs. First decision of the game. We can just come and make this point here and we've got a nice game. We've got his four point. And he may not anchor here. We'll go for next time. But we're down in the race and we've got a stronger board. So it seems thematically correct to hit unload the 13 point fight for that five point. We're not that worried if we hit back. Um, well, this sequence didn't go very well. Hmm. Now, I've got a decision. Last, take, last uh, game of the session. Now, it's interesting. My, my rating's 3.97, so it's sort of borderline between world class and experts, just about world class. If I make a blunder on this cube decision, it could take me down uh, or higher, higher up in numbers with a worse rating. 
Anyway, let's forget about the score. Let's just focus on trying to make the right play. What should we do? I'm thinking pass because we're down 17. He hits us with fours, twos. We lose some gammons. He's got to. I just don't like this position. I'm going to pass it. It's quite early in the game. Um, ah, fortunately, it was a small take. So we finished the game, the the the, the session, playing at 4.12. Uh, it's just about world class, but it's not great. Uh, so over the hundred games, that was the first session. The first ten games, my goal is to get much closer to three or three and a half, uh, which will put me in the higher echelons of the background player and re really sharp, uh, sort of sharpen up the skills. This uh, not a bad session to start, considering how little I played. Uh, but there were some interesting things that came up um, and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for session two soon.